Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Emma Tutorials. Today we do the second episode of our series on chapter by chapter summary of Rothling Heights. I've already uploaded a video on chapter 1 to chapter 7. So today we are going to start from chapter 8 and end at chapter 15. So if you haven't watched the previous video, it's important to watch it. Let me know in the comment section so I can give you the link. So today's video is going to be a very long video. Now, without wasting time, let's get to it. Chapter 8 Mrs. Ensure gives birth and dies one week after. This wrecked Hindley and pushed him into drunkenness. He suffered a great deal of emotional pains owing to his wife's death. The child was given to Nelly, that is Mrs. Dean, to nurse. Heathcliff enjoyed seeing Hindley pass through pains during this period. According to Nelly, who is the same person as Mrs. Dean, Watherin Heights became an infernal house as as no one decent visited, and the laborers who suffered a great deal of Hindley's wickedness left Wuthering Heights, but Nelly and Mr. Joseph did not leave because Mr. Joseph's vocation is to be in a place where there is much evil for him to reprove, and Nelly did not leave because she sees herself as Hindley's foster sister and always excused his behaviors. The only visitor that Wuthering Heights had at that period was Ensure Linton who always visited Cathy, that's Catherine. On one of his visits to Cathy, he witnessed the bad disposition of Cathy, who was in a bad mood after a misunderstanding with Heathcliff. That is shortly after his arrival. When Ensure entered the room, Cathy asked Nelly to stop cleaning and Nelly said she was sorry. She moved to Nelly and pinched her. Nelly objected to such treatment. And she denied pinching her and even proceeded to slap in her and ordered her out of the room. On seeing this, Ensure Linton took his cap and as he made to leave, Cathy begged him to stay. And she began to cry. Linton insisted and left. He stopped and lingered at the court. Then Nelly encouraged not to go back to Cathy because Cathy has a bad disposition. But Linton rather turned and went back to Cathy. They reconciled and their friendship developed into romance. They became lovers. Chapter 9 Mr. Henley enters the house vociferously, cursing and swearing. Then he sees Nelly with baby Herriton. He said it wasn't Herriton Nelly was carrying because he wouldn't come and hug his father. When he took the baby, he asked him to kiss him, but the baby didn't do that. He made an attempt to go upstairs and he kept Herriton on the banister. When he heard an approaching footstep from the ground floor, he forgot the baby in his hands and he fell from the banister. He was touched by the event and wished the baby was safe. Luckily, the, ba Luckily, the baby wasn't hurt. He ordered everyone, Nelly and Heathcliff, the owner of the approaching footstep, out of his sight and he began drinking. Heathcliff wished he could kill himself with drinks, but Nelly told him that Hindley's body makeup would not allow him to die from drinking, no matter how hard he tries to kill himself with drinks. Nelly went to the kitchen, and Heathcliff went through the barn, but stopped close to the kitchen, so Nelly thought he had gone to the barn. Cathy, who had been listening to the tumult from her chamber, came to the kitchen and asked Nelly if she was alone. She said yes, not knowing Heathcliff was close by. Cathy confided in her of her feelings about her two friends and the way she loves each of them, including Edgar Linton's marriage proposal, which she accepted but feels she was wrong to have accepted it. According to Cathy, she loves Linton because he loves her. He is rich, handsome, and cheerful, and would love to marry him due to those qualities. On the side of Heathcliff, she loves him with her soul but cannot marry him due to his economic status and wouldn't like to be a beggar with Heathcliff, rather he prefers to marry Linton and help Heathcliff out of penury. Then he told her that Heathcliff wouldn't accept such help because the money will come from Linton. On hearing Cathy wouldn't marry him due to his status, Heathcliff stood up from where he had been listening, unnoticed and left. So, they noticed that Heathcliff had listened to all they said and Cathy felt really bad. Joseph comes into the kitchen. After they've prepared Henley's dinner, they began arguing who should take it to him. 
but later resort to wait till he calls for it because they were terrified of him. Then he went out to call him. When Joseph asked about him but couldn't find him, they searched for him, that is Heathcliff, they searched for him everywhere but couldn't find him. Kathy went out in the rain, screaming his name. She, she was thoroughly beaten by the rain till she contracted cold. Mrs. Edgar took her to the crash to recover, but shortly, Mrs. Edgar and her husband contracted fever and died a few days after. Kathy returned to the Rotney Heights. Saucier and Hotier. Mr. Kenneth, the doctor that attended to her during her period in the grand, asked that she should be given proper attention and should not be aggravated, and no one should make her unhappy. Her brother Hindley always made sure she had her way and would not do anything to make her angry. He desired so much that Kathy married Linton to bring honor to the family. Three years later, Linton and Kathy got married at Gementon Chapel and Neely was made to work at the Grange, leaving Harrison at the Rotten Height. Chapter 10 Mr. Lockwood lies sick in the Grange as a result of his experience in his visit to Wuthering Heights. Nanny comes back and he urges her to continue with the history of the Wuthering Heights. Nanny continues. She got Kathy to trust Crouch Grand and to her disappointment, Kathy puts up a good behavior and she had a good relationship with her sister-in-law Isabella and her husband Linton loves her a lot. Nobody wants Kathy to complain of anything, and they made sure she was always happy. But this happiness was cut short by the sudden return of Heathcliff. Heathcliff came to the Grand in the night, and Nelly was the first person he met. After expressing their surprises, Heathcliff told Nelly to go tell Catherine that someone from Jimmerton Chapel is at the door. Nearly did after moments of contemplation, and Mr. Heathcliff was asked to come in. Immediately, Catherine saw him. She was overexcited, and this bothered Linton, and even made him cry in the night when Cathy expressed admiration for his looks, that is, Heathcliff's looks, and his worthiness. Cathy went to Nelly, who was already asleep, and told her how happy she was about Heathcliff's return and how bad she feels about Linton's running and crying just because she expressed admiration for Heathcliff's looks. Heathcliff began visiting Trush Cross Grange, and on one occasion, he visited earlier than usual when Linton went out. So he saw Kathy and Isabella in the library on a hostel time, because Isabella had confessed her feelings about Heathcliff to Kathy and Nelly, but the both of them tried to dissuade her from nursing such feeling because they know that Heathcliff's return to Worthing Heights was not for good, and he is also a mean man. Isabella refused to heed to their advice. So, as they sat on hostile terms in the library, Heathcliff came in, and Kathy reviewed everything Isabella had said about her feelings to Heathcliff, and this made Isabella very uncomfortable and she made attempts to leave. But Kathy seized her hand and made her stay until she finished revealing everything and Isabella had to pinch Kathy's finger before she was allowed to go. When she left, Heathcliff was glad not because he loved Isabella but because he would inherit Linton's property if he married Isabella since Isabella is his brother's heir. At Wuthering Heights, Hindley became a gambler and gambled away all his money. He began to mortgage his property to Heathcliff, who constantly lent him money to gamble. Chapter 11 Nelly goes to Wuthering Heights to advise Hindley and tell him what people are saying about him. On entering, she saw Harriton, who began to reel out a sort of rehearsed abuses. Nelly brought out orange from her bag and gave to Harriton, who snatched it from her. Harriton told her that Heathcliff is the person teaching him all the abusive words. She asked Harriton to go call Hindley, but Heathcliff appeared instead of um, Hindley. 
She fearfully left the house. Heathcliff came visiting at the grange again and Kathy tried to dissuade him from pursuing his relationship with Isabella. But he made it clear that marrying Isabella would help him achieve his revenge goal and swore to take revenge on people who had offended him. Nelly left the room. On her way to the kitchen, Nancy asked if she had seen her mistress. She told him where she was and whom she was with. Nancy went up and told Heathcliff to leave his house and never come visiting Kathy ever again. This led to a quarrel between the two and Kathy supported Heathcliff. Heathcliff, Heathcliff insulted Linton so much that instead of calling him a milk blooded lamb. Then Linton gave him a big blow on his neck which took away his breath for a minute. Linton left the room and ordered his servant to force Heathcliff out of the house. Heathcliff escapes to avoid more scuffles with the men. Cathy told Nanny that her head pangs and he will exhibit a feat of frenzy to make Linton feel bad. When Nathan came to the living room, he asked Cathy to choose between him and Heathcliff because she cannot have the two of them as friends. Cathy tried to avoid replying and asked to be left alone. When Nathan insisted, she began to bite her lips, hit her head on the couch and pretended to have fainted. This really scared Nathan and he forgot the reason he was in the living room. But Nelly told him not to worry and revealed Kathy's plan to exhibit a fit of frenzy to make him feel bad. Kathy instantly rushed out of the living room to her chamber and locked the door after her to prevent Nelly that followed her from coming in and she refused to eat dinner. Chapter 2 of Mrs. Linton, that is Catherine, stayed in her room for three days without food. On the third day, he opened the door and asked that her water container be refilled. Nelly gave her food, which she hurriedly ate. She repeatedly said she was going to die and regretted eating the food, which would stop her advancement to death. She asked about her husband and why he hadn't come to check on her. Nelly said Mr. Linton is doing well and is always occupied with his books in the library. Kathy was really infuriated by this. She was infuriated to know that her husband would care more about books than her health. She asked Nelly to go tell Linton how she was, but she didn't go, believing it was one of her fates. Mrs. Linton felt everyone whom she thought loves her now hates her, just because of a few hours' incidents. She began to tear the pillow and mutter incoherent words and even wanted to go back to Wuthering Heights. As they went downstairs, they met Linton, who was coming from the library. And Nelly begged him to forget his pride and intervene as Kathy's illness is more than her to control. Linton carried her in his arms and blamed Nelly for not informing him of Kathy's ill health, of Kathy's condition. Nelly ran off to call Mr. Kenneth, the doctor. On their way, to the grange, the doctor revealed that um, Isabella has been seen eloping with Heathcliff. When they got into the house, Nelly went and checked Isabella's room and found out that it was empty. The doctor carried on with his duties on Kathy and assured she will recover. In the morning, Linton set one of the domestic staff to wake Isabella, only to discover the room was empty. Linton severed his relationship with Isabella. Chapter 13 For two months, Isabella was not heard in the grange. Nobody knew anything about her. Till she wrote Nelly, mentioning that he had already written to his brother Linton, but he hadn't um, replied. In the letter to Nelly, she mentioned she would love to see his brother and she regretted all of her actions. She narrates her experience in the Wuthering Heights and wondered the kind of man he married. She asked Nelly if Heathcliff was mad or a demon and how she managed to survive among those people while she lived there. She narrates her first experience with Heriton who abused and cursed her for trying to create acquaintances with him. On her first night in Wuthering Heights, 
she discovered there were no mates and had to go to the kitchen by herself to fetch food. When she asked Joseph to show her a room to sleep in, Joseph took her to some dirty rooms until she demanded to be shown Mr. Heskey's room. When jo then Joseph showed her Mr. Heskey's room, but it was locked. Then she stayed in Herriton's room, waiting for her husband, Heathcliff, who left immediately they came into Wuthering Heights. When Heathcliff came back and inquired why she was in Herriton's room, she said it's because he went out with the key of their room. Mr. Heathcliff told her never to refer his room as their room because it does not belong to her. He told her about Catherine's illness and accused Edgar, that is named in her brother, of causing the sickness on... Catherine and promised to make Isabella suffer on behalf of Edgar, her brother. Chapter 14 As soon as Nelly finished reading the letter, she went to Ninton and told him that his sister Isabella sent her a letter expressing pity on Cathy's illness, her desire to see him, and her plea for forgiveness. Ninton told her he has nothing to forgive Isabella of but feels pity for her because he knows she's not happy at Wuthering Heights and permitted Nelly to visit her if she wants. The next day, Nelly went to Wuthering Heights and met Isabella who had been looking out for her. When she entered Wuthering Heights, Isabella expected to receive a note from her brother, but Nelly told her she hadn't come with any note from Linton, as Linton doesn't want any communication to exist between Heathcliff's family and his family. Heathcliff, who was seated in the parlour, asked Isabella if she has been writing to his brother. She said it was only once and that the letter doesn't contain the bad ordeals she has been passing through in Wuthering Heights, but only written to tell him she was married. Nelly tried to persuade Heathcliff to be kind to Isabella as she is used to being pampered and allow her have a maid to keep everything around her clean. Heathcliff made it clear that he doesn't have any regard for Isabella as he sees her as the most stupid person to have ever existed. He narrates all the cruel action he had exhibited to Isabella before they got married, including hanging up her dog and telling her he wishes to hang everything that belongs to Edgar except one. He sees Isabella as a disgrace to Linton's family for being so stupid. To have seen him as a romantic hero and marrying him. He told Nelly to tell Nathan of how much Isabella is suffering in his hands. But Isabella asked Nelly not to tell his brother any of those things because Heathcliff only wants to infuriate him, infuriate his brother, and gain power over him, which he says is his reason for marrying Isabella. Heathcliff ordered Isabella to go upstairs and thrusted her from the room. When he returns, he asks Nelly to make arrangements for him to visit Catherine and know how she is doing without notice of Linton and his men. Nelly refused, but he threatened to keep her hostage in Wuthering Heights until he feels his wish to see Catherine. At the end, he forced her to accept a letter from him and give to Catherine. Chapter 15. Three days after Nelly's return from Wuthering Heights, she found an opportunity to give the letter to Catherine, who asked her to read it to her. When she was told whom the letter came from, she read it. Meanwhile, Nelly seized the opportunity of everyone being in church to let Heathcliff into the house, having left the entrance open, for to let Heathcliff have easy access into the house. When Heathcliff came into the house, he saw that Catherine was going to die. And the moment they stayed together was spent kissing each other, blaming each other for leaving each other. It was so magnetic and romantic that none wanted to leave each other. Even after Nathan came back from church and hurried to Catherine's room, he saw her sleep but didn't talk to him. He carried Catherine who had fainted and told Nelly she would have some explanations to make later. Heathcliff left the house, promising to stay in the garden or pay another visit if Nelly does not inform him about Catherine's condition. Chapter 16 At midnight, Catherine gave birth prematurely to a baby girl and died some moments later. Nelly entered the room where Catherine and Linton were lying. 
She saw Catherine lying down peacefully and Nathan closed his eyes as if he was sleeping, but his face depicts anguish. It came to her, she did not feel sorry for the dead Catherine, but was happy she has found peace at last in heaven. She goes to the garden and met Heathcliff. As soon as she approached, Heathcliff knew that Catherine is dead. When Nanny confirmed his suspicion, he hit his head hard severely on a trunk and wished Catherine never have peace but haunt him as long as he lives. Nanny also didn't feel pity for him and made no attempt to console him. When Heathcliff, who has been hitting his head on a trunk, oblivious of Nelly's presence, caught himself, he ordered Nelly to leave him alone and she left immediately. Nathan was always beside Catherine's corpse, day and night, in the drawing room, where the coffin was kept uncovered. Mrs. Linton's burial was fixed on a Friday, and on Tuesday, Linton was tired and decided to retire for a few hours in his room. Nelly used the opportunity to open the window for Heathcliff, who has been outside. Heathcliff entered unnoticed and changed the content of the trinket of the locket hung around Catherine's neck. Henley was invited to the funeral of her sister but didn't attend. Isabella wasn't invited. She was buried in a place people didn't expect and according to Nelly, Nathan was also buried on the same spot after he died. Alright guys, this is how we end today's video. I hope you enjoyed this story. If you want to watch the previous episode, the video I did on chapter 1 to chapter 7, please endeavor to watch it. If you need the link, let me know in the comment section. It's important to watch it so you'll be able to understand the story very well. And very soon I'll be uploading the many chapters. Please click on the like button and on the notification bell so that once I upload it, you'll be the first person to be notified. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon in another video on the remaining chapters of the novel. Please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and share the video to your friends on social media. Bye for now.